Well, yeah, because yeah, yeah, they're right drawing tough today. You know, I'm, don't sweat now it. Now they're asking me why Back I've gone through so many cigars today. Ball, I have the EIB Network, the Lizard Institute for Advanced Anti-Leftist Anti-Media Studies. Only one of them actually... Tell them number 800-282-2882 if you want to appear. We'll get the phone call in this hour. Some and the email address, yeah. L-Rushbo. At Why is everybody so curious about what I do anyway? U.S. We'll take a break here, folks. We'll be back. Uh, we'll Houston continue Mayor vows to personally after defend this. illegal immigrants seeking aid after Harvey. No surprise there. I'm just looking at my stack here from, uh, from yesterday because I need to get something out of it very quickly. Uh, Trump is supposedly livid. With Gary Cohn, who is the Democrat Goldman Sachs economic advisor uh, in Trump's administration, and Tillerson is the former Exxon CEO and now Secretary of State. And let me check the holdover audio sound bites just to make do we have Tillerson? We don't. Tillerson was on Fox News Sunday over the weekend, essentially said um, that he speaks for himself and the administration says one thing on race relations and Trump speaks for himself. That, oh, you have that. Okay, good. It's number 11. Let's, let's, let's get to that. Uh, let me see if there's something in front of it that I need to air first. That's number 12, I think, is what I have here. Uh, uh and then Cohn is a separate. He'll grab twelve. This this is Fox News Sunday. This is Chris Wallace, and his his question is: A UN committee criticized the Trump administration for its failure to unequivocally condemn the racist events and demonstrations in Charlottesville. When the president gets into this kind of controversy, he does, and a UN committee responds the way it does. It seems to say that they begin to doubt whether we are living our American values. And this is what Tillerson, the secretary of state, responded with. I don't believe anyone doubts the American people's values or the commitment of the American government or the government's agencies to advancing those values and defending those values. And, and the president's values? Now, the president speaks for himself, Chris. Oh, is right. Don't you? <laughs> that there's no other way to interpret this. Now, now there are people trying to put a smile on this by saying, "No, no, no! You're misunderstanding what Tillerson was saying. Tillerson was saying the president speaks for himself on these issues, uh, not that he speaks differently." But I don't look. Here's here's what's happened in a, in a nutshell. Trump does his three different statements on Charlottesville. The first statement, you know, the media had a cow. They didn't particularly like it. So Trump went out and then in the second statement specifically condemned neo-Nazis, the KKK, and white supremacists. Because that's what everybody in the media and his administration was demanding that he do. Because he had screwed up in the first one by not signaling them out as the lone bad guys. Trump never thought they were the lone bad guys. Trump knows that the leftist protesters are the agitators and the bad guys, and there are just as many creeps in that group, if not more, as there are over here in these extreme so-called... I think all these groups are leftist, but that's another discussion. I don't believe that the KKK and the Nazis... The KKK is a bunch of Democrats when they were found. They're not a bunch of right-wingers, and neither are the neo-Nazis and these white supremacists. These people are people that want the federal government to be big as hell to take care of their enemies for them. That's exactly what leftism and liberalism is. But these get, people get tagged over here on the right by the media and by the Democrats. And Trump, in his second press conference, then officially condemned and called out by name the KKK, the white supremacists, and, of course, the Klan, the, uh, the neo-Nazis. Then the media said, not good enough. Not good enough. You don't really mean it because you only did it because we egged you on. You didn't do it from your heart. You don't mean it. That tick Trump off even more. So the next day he goes out and he just unloads on what he really thinks, that there are bad actors on both sides and that there are good people on both sides. And that just sent everybody into an absolute tizzy 
apparently including Gary Cohn and Tillerson. Now, Gary Cohn, the economic guy, actually said that it is a mistake to equate citizens standing up for equality and fairness with these neo-Nazis and right-wingers. And I looked at that, and I about came out of my gourd, because that's not who these people are. And if people in our administration do not have a proper understanding of who these leftists are, then where are we? Trump does. He knows exactly who they are, but he's now got two people in his administration undercutting him. Now, I need to, I need to find something out. Now, I raised a question yesterday. And I'm going to ask it again in relation to these two guys. And I've, I'm, I'm, when I raise this question, I've already seen people have responded to it uh, elsewhere in the media. You know, the CEOs of Apple and J.P. Morgan Chase both announced massive million-dollar donations to the Southern Poverty Law Center sometime during the last week. Now, the Southern Poverty Law Center is perhaps one of the biggest hate groups on the left. They tar and feather and slander right-wing groups and call them hate groups. They've got a map on their website. And wherever a right-wing group that says or does anything that the Southern Poverty Law Center is a bunch of leftist freaks... All you have to do is disagree with them, and you are called a hater. For example, if they support gay marriage and LGBT and all these other things, and you happen to disagree with it, you are the hater. You hate. You are a hate-filled person that is bordering on the use of violence. And that's how they characterize these groups. And it led to a deranged leftist walking into the office of the Family Research Council and actually shooting at somebody. It's what contributes to this deranged guy shooting up Republicans at a baseball practice in Virginia. The Southern Poverty Law Center and other left-wing groups actually inspired their dope members to violence while claiming that the right-wing groups that they're identifying, and they, they point them out on the map, they identify where these groups' headquarters are on a map, and they, their deranged supporters end up there protesting and so forth. Now, my question yesterday was, do the CEOs of Apple and J.P. Morgan not know this? And it was a legitimate question because in the mainstream media, the Southern Poverty Law Center is treated as the Vatican. The Southern Poverty Law Center is treated as one of the most worthwhile, fair, enduring organizations devoted to equality and fairness. And that's the last thing they're devoted to. These are the people that want to shut you up if you say something they disagree with. You don't even have to be saying it about them. Basically, all you have to do is be a prominent conservative or run a prominent conservative uh, 501c3 fundraising organization. If your conservative group raises money, then the Southern Poverty Law Center is out to destroy you. So I asked the question, do these CEOs not know this? And it was a legitimate question because if all they do, if their total source of information happens to be CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, and maybe the Washington Post, it, it is entirely possible they don't know the truth about the Southern Poverty Law Center, just like they don't know the truth about me, just like they don't know the truth about conservatism because they never expose themselves to it, because they've already been convinced it's just a bunch of kooks and fringe and it's abnormal and they are normal and so they don't need to pay any attention. But these CEOs are in the business of selling products to everybody. And so when they go public with their million dollar donations to the Southern Poverty Law Center and then say that they will match their employees donations up to a certain amount to this group, you think every employee at Apple or J.P. Morgan happens to agree with the CEOs? With The number of people we're talking about, it simply can't be. 
There cannot be universal agreement. I guarantee you the people that don't agree with the CEOs at these companies probably have to stay pretty much hidden, have to keep their thoughts pretty much to themselves if they know what's good for them. But the same token here, does Gary Cohn, does, does Gary Cohn, who is the top-ranking economic advisor to Trump White House, does he really not know what Antifa is? Does he really not know that they are a group that is devoted to violence, that they are a hate group, that they are not devoted to equality and liberty and fairness, they are devoted to exactly the opposite. Does he not know it? It's a legitimate question. I think it's entirely possible that a left-wing Democrat would not know what the Southern Poverty Law Center is. The other side of it is that they do know. They know exactly what it is, and they support it anyway, and they know exactly what Antifa is, and they support it anyway while lying about who they are. Is that which is easier to believe here? I must tell you, folks, before you start cackling at me, the one thing that I have learned, the one thing, one of the many things that I have learned over the course of my career is how genuinely ignorant and in some cases stupid people in our media are. And when I say ignorant, I really mean they are closed off. They do not expose themselves to anything other than what they already believe. You know what they say about us? They say that we do nothing but confirm our biases. That's why we watch Fox News. We're not interested in the old BS. We watch all of their crap. We read every bit of idiocy they say. They do not consult us. Their biases and their prejudices prevent them. I know liberalism better than they do. I know what they're thinking before they're thinking. I know what they're going to do before they do it because I have taken the time to study them and understand them what makes them tick, why they think the way they are. They're the ones closed-minded. They're the ones who are ignorant. They're the ones who are not curious. They're the ones who live in this dream world where we are Satan incarnate. My question is, is that what we've got in the White House? We have in the White House an economic advisor who really doesn't know that Antifa is not devoted to equality and fairness. And is, it that, is that why he decides to diss the president? And go out and, and, and suggest the president is siding with people. Let me put it a better way. He went out and basically implied the president is opposed to citizens standing up for equality and fairness. And then Tillerson, well, you know, we in the administration heard the State Department, uh, the U.S. government. Yeah, right. We, uh... We uh, advance those values. We defend those values. Uh, commitment to those values. What about the president? Well, you know, president speaks for himself, Chris. Oh, really? It cannot include the president here. Gary Cohn is Trump's National Economic Council director. And he was he said what he said in an interview with the Financial Times, and he was openly critical of Trump's comments about the violence in Charlottesville. He said citizens standing up for equality and freedom can never be equated with white supremacist neo-Nazis and the KKK. But that Trump didn't. Trump did not equate the two sets of people. He said that more than one side was responsible for the blame for the violence, which is true. He didn't fall for the usual tack of blaming only one side, which is what the media demanded, and apparently what Gary Cohn did. Gary Cohn, yeah, the right-wingers, they're the problem, the supremacists, the neo-Nazis, the KKK. And there's no equivocation between them and citizens standing up for equality and freedom. Don't forget, we had this New York Times reporter who was out there at Charlottesville when this happened, who was witnessing the violence on the left 
and wrote about it and then had her tweets canceled or deleted by the New York Times because it was so against protocol. What was her name? <sighs> Metal Block. Middle Company. She's a predominant, a prominent reporter at the Times who was there and, uh, and tweeting when it happened. So my question, does Cohen really not know? Did the CEOs of Apple and J.P. Morgan really not know about the Southern Poverty Law Center? Or do they know and simply hate right-wingers so much that they will support the Southern Poverty Law Center because they're nothing more than dyed-in-the-wool leftist activists themselves? What do you think? I, you know, I, I side on the fact they don't know. I think these leftists are some of the most fooled, misguided, misdirected people. And they fall for anything that they're told is compassionate or sustainable or devoted to equality. And in, in the areas that they would read or the TV networks they would watch, you will not ever find one critical word of the Southern Poverty Law Center. In fact, you'll find nothing but devotion. And the people at that stupid thing, what about what, what, what that name into a Southern Poverty Law Center? These people hate the South. They are not in poverty and they don't do anything about poverty. And the law is something that gets in their way. That, that Their name is a distraction. Anyway, I take a break. I just saw the clock. Hang on, folks. We'll be back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Hill Rushbone at Cutting Edge. It was Cheryl Gay Stolberg of the New York Times who had those two tweets. That recorded and referenced the anti-hate violence, or the pro-hate violence by the left, by Antifa. She tweeted two things documenting the, the, uh, the fact that she saw violence on both sides. She saw hate on both sides. Cheryl Gay Stolberg and the New York Times went in there and essentially deleted her tweets. And she had to, re she had to revise what she had said. Guess Gary Cohn missed that. Guess Gary Cohn missed the New York Times reported there was violence and hate-filled behavior on the part of citizens standing up for equality and fairness. No, look, here's the, here's the reason I'm asking about Gary Cohn. Gary Cohn is not just some random economist here. He's in the White House. He is the National Economic Council Director. He has Trump's ear on matters of econ economics. My, my point is this. If he is mistaken, it, or if he doesn't know, if he's not able to see the threat that these Antifa and related groups pose to liberty and freedom, if he is not able to see that, that worries me. That worries me tremendously. We don't need somebody in this administration Put him in the Obama administration, but not this one. We don't need somebody who doesn't see the threat of leftist violence. Somebody who looks at a bunch of leftists and automatically concludes that they are devoted to equality and fairness. You know, if, if, if this guy doesn't see who these people are, I'm sorry, that's a problem. And if the guy is then going to separate himself from the president and put himself on a pedestal, of superiority based on his own ignorance in order to distance himself from the president. For what reason would he be doing that? Media fawning? Trump doesn't need people like this, if you ask me. Trump needs people that see the world as he sees it. Uh, that's the reason why you win. That's why you put together an administration. And I just, this, it's, 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 to me, it's problematic. If there's going to be somebody in there that close who can look at these events and only see half of what's happening and be wrong about the other, well, be wrong on both sides. Sorry, it presents problems for me. As a citizen, not as a radio host, as a citizen. Now, supposedly, uh, Trump is livid with both these guys, Cohn and Tillerson. But I'll tell you what this shows. Once again, we have this event in Charlottesville, which was totally mischaracterized. Blatantly so. 
by the media and the gutless wonders that refuse to take issue with it prevail and run the day, rule the day here. It just goes to show you what everybody's up against. These guys, it could well be that, that, that Cohn and Tillerson are just choosing the path of least resistance. Maybe that I don't want to get in a scrap with the media. Look what they're doing to Trump. I'd rather be on their good side, you know, like the congressional Republicans and senatorial Republicans have decided to do. But I'm just, folks, there's nothing, there's nothing about fairness or equality or liberty when we're talking about these leftist protesters. They are, they're devoted to the exact opposite. These are the people who are defining hate speech as anything they disagree with. These are the people who are trying to maintain the U.S. Constitution prohibits hate speech. These are the people using their power combined with that of the media to get as much force behind the notion that if you're not one of them, you don't have a right to say anything. And if you do, you have the, the there is the obligation to rough you up, to intimidate you or what have you. There's nothing, nothing about this group that is devoted to equality. And there's certainly nothing about freedom that they're devoted to, except for their own. It's like the Southern Poverty Law Center. The only poverty they've ever solved is their own with your money.